Kia ora team, my name's Ben, and let's talk shock. So, <laughs> that's not shock. What shock is, is an adequate oxygen delivery and consumption at a cellular level. And we've got four main types, and one of them has three types below that. So let's go through them now. If we start on this side, we've got hypovolemic. So this is where we have decreased blood volume. So this blood volume, could be a decrease in plasma, like when we have a burn, we lose a lot of our plasma. Could be whole blood, either we can stab someone, we can cut someone, and that blood is lost externally, or we could have GI bleeding and have internal bleeding, as long as it's out of circulation. Then we have extracellular loss. So this is like vomiting, diarrhea, dehydration. So anything when our blood volume decreases, it can lead to inadequate oxygen delivery and consumption at a cellular level and hypovolemic shock. Hypo, low, volume, emic in the blood. Okay, then we have obstructive. So this is a mechanical obstruction to blood flow. This could be a pulmonary embolism. So when we get that blood clot in our pulmonary circulation, stopping blood getting through. Could be cardiac tamponade. So remember we've got this two layers of gland wrap that wrap around the heart. And if there's trauma or an infection or swelling in there, then that fluid is gonna push in on the heart and obstruct it, so stop it from filling. That could be obstructive shock. Or a tension pneumothorax. So this is where we get a little trapped or cut in our pleura. So as we breathe in, air goes into that pleural space, and as we breathe out, that trapdoor shuts, and air gets trapped in the pleural space. So as that keeps building up, it can end up squashing our superior and inferior vena cava and putting pressure on the heart and obstructing it, so therefore, obstructive shock. The next one we have is cardiogenic. So cardi, heart, genic, like genesis, the first book in the Bible, which is creation. So with cardiogenic shock, this is a problem caused because the heart isn't doing its job properly. So decreased cardiac output despite adequate blood volume. So what's wrong with the heart? It could be myocardial infarction. So dead meat don't beat. If part of our heart wall, our heart myocardium dies, then we've got less squeeze to get blood out of the heart. Could be a problem with the valves. So remember the valves are the things, the doors, that let blood flow from our atrium to our ventricle and then our ventricle outside to our arteries. So either they can have stenosis, which is where the doors are creaky and they don't open enough. So this is gonna decrease our cardiac output because we can't get blood out. Or we could have regurgitation, which is where our valves should be one way but regurgitation means the valve kind of flops open again. So instead of blood flowing in one direction, it then flows backwards, decreasing our cardiac output. And then arrhythmias. So the electrical conduction system of the heart, if this is messed up, we're not having an efficient contraction, so therefore decreased cardiac output. So these three, if you think about like a petrol station, hypovolemic, we're running out of fuel, obstructive, there's a blockage in our pipes, and then cardiogenic, there's a problem with the pump. So those are first three types of shock. Then on this side, we've got distributive shock. So with distributive shock, we've got three types. What distributive means is we have an enlarged vascular compartment or displacement of vascular volume away from the heart and central circulation. What this means is with distributive shock, we just get a massive amount of vasodilation. So this means if our pipes get way too big, then we don't have enough blood volume to fill all our pipes. Okay, how can this happen? So we got septic shock, so a dysregulated host response to an infection causing systemic inflammation. Basically, we have an infection that our, our body overreacts to and we get inflammation everywhere. As part of that, we get a huge amount of vasodilation. 
distributive shock. Anaphylactic, so we have a type 1 hypersensitivity reaction mediated by IgE antibodies. So this is a peanut allergy or a bee sting allergy when we get this hypersensitive response where we get massive amounts of vasodilation. Awesome. Well, not awesome. And neurogenic. So neuro, nerve, genic creation. So something wrong with the nerves. So with neurogenic shock, we've got decreased sympathetic tone and increased parasympathetic tone. So a parasympathetic nervous system is all about vasodilation and our sympathetic is all about vasoconstriction. So if for some reason we have decreased sympathetic tone and increased parasympathetic tone, we're getting massive amount of vasodilation. So the types of things that could do this would be a spinal cord injury if it's quite high up because our parasympathetic tone comes from our vagus nerve, which is a cranial nerve, and our sympathetic tone uh, comes from our thoracic portion. So if we have a high spinal cord injury, we knock out our sympathetic, we still have our parasympathetic through the vagus nerve causing vasodilation. Then we've got central nervous system, depressant drugs or hypoxia of the central nervous system, um, general anesthesia, and severe hypoglycemia can all cause neurogenic shock. Okay, quick recap. So our first three were hypovolemic, decreased blood volume, obstructive, uh, clogging of the pipes or obstruction of the heart, and cardiogenic, problem with the heart, the valves, the muscle, or the electrical supply. And with these three, um, the body's going to react by increasing the sympathetic nervous system to increase the heart rate, to try to increase the cardiac output and the stroke volume, and to cause peripheral vasoconstriction, which is a good idea because if we're running out of blood volume or we're not circulating enough blood, if we vasoconstrict to our periphery, then we're going to redirect blood to the important bits. These three are grouped together because they're all going to have that vasoconstriction response. They're going to have increased capillary refill time. They'll probably be quite cool to touch because of that vasoconstriction. Whereas with our distributive shock, we've got vasodilation. So initially we're going to get lots of blood rushing to the periphery. So their capillary refill time is going to be quite rapid and they're going to be warm to touch. Distributive would be warm shock and these three here would be cool shock. In hindsight, we should probably change the colors. Too late now. All right, team. Happy studying.